All right. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to. Sorry, I. Is it echoing? Yeah, it's. For some reason, there is. So, may I ask Let me see if this is fixed. No, it is not. It's still echoing. Sorry, guys. A little bit of technical hit. <laughs> I think uh... your voice is okay. It's only my voice. No, it's gone now. Great. Done. Thank you very much, Devashish. So, hello, everybody, and welcome to On Companion Foundation's webinar titled Science Management and the Future of COVID 19. Three, and I'm going to be hosting the uh, today's webinar. And uh, this is going to be roughly an hour-long session, including my introduction, which I promise not to exceed five minutes. The presentation in itself, which will be around 30 minutes-ish, and uh, followed by then we are going to open the floor for any question answer, which will roughly be around five minutes, and then we will conclude conclude the session with a vote of thanks from our president, Mr. Devashi Chaudhary. So, as I already said, I am Atre, and I'm the founder and the chief executive of Un Companion Foundation. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to basically to introduce our organization, Un Companion Foundation, in very, very, very brief way, literally. So this is a non-profit organization based in Calcutta, India. And we founded the organization back in the middle of 2018. As, and as you can see, as the name suggests, that the Onk Companion Foundation, so the Onk, the Onk part of the Onk Companion is coming from oncology, which you all know is the treatment of cancer. And uh, companion is something I don't really have to explain. So literally, we as an organization is dedicated to become the companion during a people's cancer cancer journey. Our main goal is to provide a customized and a safe peer-to-peer -peer online networking site, especially dedicated for the cancer patients, their families, their friends, their caregivers. And what this means is, uh, uh, so may I actually ask everyone to put your microphones on mute? There, are, there literally is background noise. Thank you very much. So what I was saying is that, so this uh, this means that we have an online peer support networking tool, which is operated both in the web browser as well as a mobile app, where, where the entire registration and the posting is regulated to basically to, to stop the abuse and trolling, which is very much generic to the social media platforms. So the patients, in a sense, they they and they and their family members, they are free to share anything pertaining to their cancer journey with their fellow members whenever they want, and if it's a virtual tool, so it's basically available 24/7 at their disposal, and. Uh, uh, our organization also has both certified psychologists for ad hoc psychological counseling whenever needed. Uh, they are available for the online chat once it is requested. We also have a very special feature called CD Cancerpedia, and which essentially means is that one will get the information on the cancer specialty hospitals and clinics in the major metropolitan cities of India. And uh, needless to say, we are non-profit, so all the services are basically free, including the registration. So all, literally, all you have to do is that you have to type on companion in the Google, and the first hit will lead you to the right page. And you can know more about the organization and how you can support us. Now I am going to say a little, really a few words about today's webinar. Although, as I said before, that our organization is entirely focused on cancer, but still, as a health supporting tool provider, we do feel that we have a responsibility to address the ongoing health scenario in which we are in now. 
So the goal here is basically to disseminate the credible information about COVID-19 pandemic. As we all realize that during this information blast, one needs to have the relevant and trustworthy information to sustain. So our presenter today, who is Dr. Shushanta Roy who is the Chief Scientific Advisor from Companion Foundation, and he will be walking us through the various scientific aspects of COVID pandemic including which basically includes the virus itself, its mode of infection, the current diagnostic tests available to detect the virus or to detect the responses of the immune system of one's body, and the drugs and the vaccination, vaccines under, under development, and also why the COVID infection control is critical for cancer patients. Uh, now, really, it's it's my pleasure to give a little bit of introduction about our presenter today, Dr. Shushant Roy Chaudhary. Dr. Roy Chaudhary, he has earned his PhD degree in biochemistry back in 1985 from the University of Calcutta. And then he went out and worked as a postdoctoral fellow from 1985 to 1995 years in the University of Pennsylvania, US. After that, he returned to India and he served as scientist and principal investigator in one of the most prominent CSR institutes of India, uh, which is called Indian Institute of Chemical Biology. I, I, also, got my, I also got my PhD from that institute. Video to offer, And uh, uh, sorry, there is there someone speaking, but uh, you, you really need to turn your uh, your your microphone. Probably it's on in. Yeah, please do. Thank you very much. So, yes, yeah, so what I was saying is that uh, so he spent 24 years of his life as a scientist and principal investigator in this uh, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology, and he supervised 24 PhD students during his tenure. He is a cancer geneticist, and uh, he contributed significantly to the molecular understanding of human cancer and published more than 170 peer-reviewed research articles in various national and international journals. Currently, he is holding a position of Chief of Basic Research in Saroj Bhutta Cancer Center and Research Institute, which we very commonly call as uh, Thakur Bhutta Cancer Research Hospital. He also served as a president of Indian Association of Cancer Research from 2016 to 2019 for three years. And he has been awarded the very prestigious JC Post National Fellowship by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India in 2017. So before I give this session over to Dr. Roy Chaudhary, uh, let me do a very, very simple little bit of housekeeping. So firstly, as Devashish mentioned in the very beginning of the webinar, today's webinar is being recorded and I am, I am requesting people once again to please turn off your uh, your microphones just uh, just in order to keep the noise at bay because it's really really important for recording so as i was saying is today's webinar is being recorded to keep this very important content available for everybody who didn't really get a chance to join the webinar in the real time and we will be uploading the recorded version as well in our social media, that's the point. I mean, which includes our Facebook page, our Twitter handles, everyone. So please watch that space and share the webinar with everyone you feel relevant. And uh, I know I'm sensitive of the fact that the time is finite, but I also feel is that it is very important to have a mass dialogue regarding the basic science. So please, please make the webinar interactive. Write your questions in a small icon, a small chat icon on your screen. I'm going to take one or two questions in the end of the presentation. And uh, but at the same time, please make sure. So when you're posting, I can see many of us are joining. So whenever you're posting your questions, so that means writing your question in the chat box, please make sure that you are giving your email ID in the parenthesis so that in, inside the bracket, so that even if we, we don't have a chance to really answer your question today. We'll make sure we'll reach out to you. So that's why your email ID is very important. Please make sure that you are writing your email ID when posting a question. And uh, so, and again, as, as I 
keep saying during the webinar. So I'm humbly requesting all of you to keep your microphones on mute during this whole session, which is really, really important to reduce the background noise in the recorded session. And uh, thank you very, very much for your cooperation on this. And uh, I should really stop talking now. And I would like to start the meeting by welcoming our chief scientific advisor, Dr. Shashanka Raichaudhuri. Are you ready, sir? So do you hear me? Hello. Looks like there is some connection problem with him. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we do hear you. Okay. Yes. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. Over to you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Atri. Uh, good evening, everybody, and or good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are in the across the globe. Uh, I welcome you to this webinar that has been uh, organized by the our organization on Companion and Company and Foundation. Uh, today, I'll be presenting some aspects of the current pandemic that is going on across the world and uh, trying to understand that what caused has, what caused this pandemic, what are the pathogenic agent uh, that is responsible, how we can detect that pathogenic uh, agent. And how, what are the disease codes that uh, this uh, pathogenic virus is uh, uh, is causing? And also, what are the various treatment resp uh, responses or the strategies that are being developed to uh, tackle this uh, disease? Since we are an uh, organization which cares about the cancer disease, so I will ask, uh, talk about a little bit about the impact of COVID-19 on the cancer patients. And I will uh, end with some future uh, thoughts uh, during my uh, presentation. Uh, next slide, please, Devashish. Devashish, next slide, please. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, now, as you see, uh, all it started uh, around uh, sometime in December 2019 in a uh, city called Wuhan in central uh, China, where the local hospital authority noticed Several uh, patients are coming to the hospital with a uh, with a severe pneumonia, which is caused by uh, some uh, uh, by some unknown agent. Uh, so it, it went to such a pro uh, proportion that local uh, administrative authority intervened into the matter, and they uh, finally established that actually a, uh, some pathogenic virus is causing this disease. And as soon as this pathogenic virus was discovered, within two weeks, the genomic material of this virus was, de was uh, determined, and it was found that it is a novel coronavirus. Next slide, please. Next slide. Now, as you see, uh, this invisible enemy, which we cannot see by in naked eyes, actually uh, scientists have made it possible to using a sophisticated technique called transmission electron microscopy to see this virus particle. As you can see in the, in the left panel, the two virus particles that are shown, I request you to draw your attention to some white spots around these virus, virus particles. Now, in the right panel, it shows a low resolution of the same, uh, same uh, area where you see there are some several black spots. These black spots are actually the viral particles that are excreted, secreted into the tissue environment. Looking at this, uh, at this virus structure, the artist draw a carton which shows that some protrusions are coming out from the outer surface of the uh, particles, these protrusions are actually those white spots that you see in this mi electron micrograph. So uh, these protrusions are called, are made of a protein called spike protein. Apart from this uh, spike protein, there are two other proteins are also present on the surface of these viral particles. These are called the membrane proteins and the envelope proteins. The RNA, RNA genome mo genomic molecule uh, that are responsible for the propagation of this virus is encapsulated within this uh, within this uh, structure, and this there is a protein called nucleoprotein which are attached uh, to this viral RNA RNA molecule. Once uh, the, uh, the viral structure was identified and uh, the, its genomic material was was determined. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Oh. 
Så jeg skal med den til uh, en af punktet til mig bare. Once uh, that uh, structure was determined and it was found that this is a coronavirus, actually coronavirus was well known virus to the scientific community uh, and uh, uh, immediately the uh, how this virus infects into the cell and uh, replicates and um, uh, makes lots of viral particles was Im immediately determined. As you can see in this slide, the, as, the, as soon as the viral particle attaches to some protein on the cell membrane, it, 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 it enters into the cell and the RNA molecule is released from the, using this RNA molecule several proteins are synthesized and these proteins are uh, uh, finally assembled in a membranous structure which then encapsulates the newly uh, synthesized viral RNA molecule to, to the, together with the nucleocapsid protein molecule and the mature uh, virions are um, uh, made and get released from the uh, cell. So this is the life cycle of the virus, how it enters into the cell and makes thousands of progeny in one go, about thousands of virus particles are released into the, uh, into the outer uh, uh, millimeter. Next slide, please. Okay, now let's uh, look into the uh, into the uh, infection process that is going on when this virus itself. There are a few uh, few parameters that we have to keep in mind with respect to the infectious diseases. Now, as you see here, uh, that one of the important Sorry, it has been a lot of echoing lately. So again, please requesting everyone who is joining newly, please keep your microphone on mute, please. Thank you very much, sir. Individuals infects how many uh, individuals? If uh, generally, uh, if uh, it infects infects more than one individual, then uh, the infection is very dangerous. And if, uh, uh, if it's less than one, then its infection is under the control. So all we are trying to, uh, using various methods, to bring this, this R0 value uh, below one, uh, but currently it is around 1.55 in, in India. So we have to work hard more uh, to bring it uh, in less than one. And I will say, I will talk to you how we are trying to uh, do that. Now let us say a look into the scenario when a particular, uh, uh, so please go back to the slide, uh, uh, a scenario when a particular individual is gets infected with a virus. Uh, what happens initially after a few, few days, the virus uh, goes into a latent period when the virus particle is, uh, is, is being synthesized within the, within the cell and gradually the viral uh, number of virus particles get increased within the, within the cell and the uh, person becomes infectious. Now, if we look into the uh, symptomatic uh, aspect of the disease course of this infected individual, we we'll see that there is initial period that this uh, person is asymptomatic. That that means that at this time there is no symptoms is uh, uh, showing the person is showing not no symptom however after about two, uh, about uh, two weeks later the person so showing start showing the symptoms so as a result this since about it takes about 14 days to show the simple uh, symptom uh, symptom yeah, it has been determined that an as uh, a suspected infected individual should be quarantined for 15 days to see whether uh, he is he or she is developing in a symptom once the symptoms started developing, gradually it, 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 it increases its severity and it has two, uh, two different traits. First, uh, a, a majority of the individuals actually resolve the virus and they will recover. Now, uh, if the person is mildly infected, then it, uh, he or she will recover within two weeks. But if the person is severely infected, uh, then, uh, the, then the symptoms are severe, then it will, go, it will take about six, uh, six weeks. The, those who are going further uh, uh, critical severe symptoms actually uh, some of them uh, a small percentage of those uh, those uh, patients will die and there is a parameter called case fatality rate uh, ratio uh, or case fatality rate which determines the how much uh, uh, people are dying uh, out of this uh, this infection i will talk about this thing again later 
Now you see, uh, this is the scenario when one person get uh, get infected this uh, disease course or infection course. Now, if you see another parameters with respect to this virus, uh, uh, this uh, pathogenic uh, infectious diseases that need to understand, especially with respect to the virus, is that uh, as you know, generally the viral particles are uh, infection uh, are can replicate when it goes inside the cell, but when it is outside in the environment, it just doesn't replicate. But it can uh, stay in, in a state, some uh, in a viable state, where when for some time, when it, that virus particle gets <coughs> uh, uh, gets hold of some individual and can re infect into another individual. So we have to very we have to know very carefully that how this virus particle particle is doing when it is, is, is in the environment. As it's, as it's shown in here, when it is it falls on the surface, it it can stay for one to seven hours uh, on the surface. So anybody touching uh, touching the surface of this where the viral particle is there, uh, then the person has a potential to get infected. Now, another important parameters with respect to the uh, 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 viral infection or to any pathogenic infection is the seroconversion. That means that after which time the infected individual is developing the antibodies. It is all. It is. It always happens. Then when a pathogen in, in, enters into our body, our in, our immune system develops antibody against those pathogens. So uh, so uh, this antibody uh, uh, works in two different ways. It helps us to detect the infection as well as it it, it let us to know. Whether uh, whether that antibody remains for a longer period in the in the individual, then uh, there could be a possibility of the, uh, developing vaccine that I will talk later. Next slide, please. Now let us uh, see how uh, an inf 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 infected individual can be uh, detected. There are basically two different uh, uh, techniques that are currently used to detect and uh, uh, identify an individual whether he or she is infected or not. Uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, suffering from the COVID-19 disease, the best way to detect the uh, uh, virus is to uh, is by a technique called reverse transcriptional polymerase chain reaction or the RT-PCR. In this particular technique, uh, through some chemical reaction, we are detecting the RNA molecule of the virus. Since we are detecting the directly the RNA molecule of the virus, so this particular technique is used as a confirmatory test uh, to see whether the uh, person is infected or not. There is an alternative test, as I said, that when the uh, virus gets into the cell, uh, it, uh, our immune system reacts to its reacts to its and generates anti anti uh, antibody. So one can also measure the antibody uh, uh, level in the person to uh, to find out whether the person is infected or not. But here, uh, uh, this uh, antibody level indicates that part person is in infected, but it doesn't tell whether the person is currently infected or the person was infected in the past. So actually, this antibody test is used as a uh, preliminary screening of the, in the population to see how many how much the infection has been spread. But to detect in, with a confirmatory that if a, a given individual is having the live virus replica, replica, replications going on, we have to uh, take the reverse uh, RT-PCR test to, uh, to confirm it. Next slide, please. Now let us talk about the course of the disease uh, after this viral infection. So what happens when, once the symptom is set in, there are uh, several uh, symptoms like fever, cough, fatigue uh, that, uh, that uh, started, uh, that starts uh, appearing in the, in the infected patients. But you see, these, uh, these symptoms are also very much overlapping with other, uh, uh, other uh, inf uh, infections, with other infectious agents like flu-like infections. So there is the initial period that you have to watch and see whether, the, see how the symptoms is developing and whether the patient is resolving the symptoms or not. But after some time, symptoms become very uh, much severe and that requires the hospital uh, hospital uh, admission. And once that uh, patient gets admitted in the hospital and as the uh, symptoms, uh, severity of the symptoms increases, the patient undergoes through various phases of uh, disease uh, disease progressions. First, it, uh, it, uh, it, it shows the dyspnea, that means uh, it is having a shortness of breath and subsequently uh, the major symptoms that uh, uh, that uh, that happens uh, shows up is the acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS once a papa uh, 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 
individual uh, reaches that this stage then you know it is considered the patient is in a severe uh, showing the severe symptoms and uh, this could lead to various other element in the uh, in the in, in the in the body like injury to the other organs and maybe ultimately leads to uh, a failure of various multi organs and succumb to the death so uh, at this stage, patient is taken to the intensive care unit and for further more intensive uh, 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 procedures to be uh, to be to to, uh, to uh, give this patient uh, life uh, life support. Now another important uh, feature here is the uh, since those who who are dying. And those are those are cases that are uh, coming up to see how much uh, what are the percentage of individual that uh, that are dying. It is a very important parameter to understand that how se severe is the disease process. Overall, there is not much people die out of this uh, out of this infection. As you can see, about one point one to two percent people uh, people die. But there is very in interesting in, uh, feature of this uh, uh, case fatality ratio, where it shows that people who are at the older age are showing much more uh, fatality than at the younger age. Uh, this is very important parameters uh, to look uh, look into the uh, uh, disease uh, disease process. Next slide, please. Now, let us talk about how this virus gets into the cell. You know, where the virus from outside requires to attach to some protein on the membrane of our cell through which it can get into the cell. And this is called the receptor, the virus receptor. What have been observed that this particular virus uses a very important protein called uh, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to latch on it uh, to get into the, into the cell. This ACE2 is a very important uh, enzyme which takes part in a very important uh, our uh, cellular uh, processes called renin angiotensin system which actually controls our blood pressure. Although that this virus, when it attaches to this uh, receptor uh, through the spike protein and gets into the cell, but its effect on this renin angiotensin system is not yet very clear that how much it disturbs this process. However, in the next slide, please, what is uh, very well known about the disease process is, is, is the disturbance in a process called the or the manifestation of a process called cytokine release syndrome now what happens i just i will just very simple in a simple language i'll try to explain this thing to to you when a virus or any pathogen gets into the, our body our immune system reacts to it okay and, and those cells like macrophage dendritic cells monocytes they react to it however under certain circumstances or under certain immune status of the uh, of the uh, infected individual sometimes uh, these uh, 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 activation of these cells leads to the release of very a class of protein which acts as called the cytokines pro inflammatory cytokines these uh, proteins actually uh, uh, normally they should uh, try to kill the virus but instead of doing that thing they are uh, uh, they are damaging our our, our cells so they get uh, uh, some uh, they initiate some aberrant processes in our body and as a result uh, both the uh, our uh, blood cells as well as other cells of the body get uh, uh, activated and they as a result those cells are get damaged and, and and as a result the tissue gets damaged so the crs is has been found to be the one of the main reason between the behind the pathogenic uh, uh, activity of this of this of this virus there are other pathogenic uh, manifestations are also now being reported like some uh, blood clottings are taking place some uh, unusual clottings of the blood is taking place but we we, have, uh, we need to see further more detail uh, that how this affect uh, the uh, the disease uh, disease uh, process next slide please now let us talk about that how we are how the scientists are trying to uh, intervene with this disease uh, process how they are trying to inhibit or make the virus non -fun non functional so that it cannot replicate inside the uh, inside our uh, body so there are three prong approaches have been, have been taken there are several drugs molecules already known that uh, that are some of them are already known antiviral drugs that are that are used or that are being developed people are trying to see whether those drugs molecules can be repurposed for uh, inhibiting this particular uh, 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 sars cov2 uh, virus and apart from that also there are uh, uh, 
efforts are going on to develop some antibodies which uh, which can bind to the uh, surface protein the spike protein of the uh, virus and cannot allow as a result it cannot bind to the ac receptor so it cannot enter into the body so those kind of antibody molecules are also uh, being developed to see whether they can inhibit the viral viral entry into the into the cell and finally there are lots of lots of effort is going on for the development of the vaccine as you know for in, in, in infectious disease vaccine is the one of the most important arsenal that we use to combat the infectious disease process but the development of vaccine is very arduous process as i as as i discuss in the next slide next slide please Okay, so you see, uh, normally vaccine development takes a long, long, long time. There are lots of lots of steps are involved to develop an effective and efficacious uh, vaccine. As you see here, after initial exploratory uh, uh, phase, when the uh, virus, is, what uh, component of the viral particle will be used as a, for the vaccine development, it undergoes through a preclinical stage and subsequently a clinical uh, developmental stage, and then finally other regulatory processes. So as you can see, it takes almost 10 years to, uh, to develop any vaccine. But under this in the extraordinary situation, in this disparate situation, it requires the disparate uh, you know, uh, uh, effect and disparate uh, things to be needs to be done. So people are now uh, trying to develop uh, 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 this vaccine at a much more shorter time. As you can see here, on December 31st, the virus was identified and its sequence was determined on the January 11th. Now, within the March to March to, uh, 2020, one uh, company, uh, Moderna, has started the clinical trial of, of a vaccine uh, for a potential vaccine molecule. And there is also another company, uh, another institute from uh, UK, that's Oxford in, uh, University, also is developing another vaccine, uh, which is also entered into the uh, clinical uh, clinical uh, uh, studies, clinical trials. So uh, we are uh, they, are, they are hoping that we'll have uh, this clinical uh, trial data some sometime in August, and if that looks good, then by next year middle, uh, probably they will start manufacturing this vaccine. So as you can see, uh, if this is uh, this can be made possible, this is going to be a watershed moment in the history of the medical uh, medical science that a vaccine is developed within one and one and one year to uh, one and a half year. Last vaccine that was developed, uh, it took uh, for the Ebola. It took about five years to uh, to to develop. Next slide, uh, slide please. Now let us talk about a little bit of the cancer, how this uh, uh, viral infection is impacting uh, the cancer uh, patients. As you know, the cancer patients are, uh, 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 first of all, because of the disease, nature of the disease, they are very weak. Their immune systems are very weak. And as a result of which, this virus can easily infect and cause severe uh, disease in the cancer, uh, cancer patients. So as you can see in one study in China, it shows that both the cancer patients and the cancer survivors has much higher uh, incidence of uh, severe uh, severe e events than the no cancer uh, no cancer patients. Similarly, the probability of uh, showing severity uh, events is much higher for the cancer patients. So, if, or, in, for that reason, we really have to take care, special care of our cancer patients, so that they go, don't get infected. Also, there, there is a proposal uh, that maybe for some cancer patients, the treatment like chemotherapy treatment, which actually uh, 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 compromises the immunity of of, of the uh, patient should be deferred for some time. But as you can see, as you can understand, the, the treatment for cancer patient cannot be uh, held back because otherwise the tumor is going to uh, grow uh, grow further and maybe uh, go uh, will, will go beyond the uh, uh, hand of the uh, physicians. The next slide, please. Okay, finally, uh, let me now try to, after giving all this scenario, let me now try to tell you that what really uh, we have to do now, because the virus is uh, still uh, still infecting many individuals. Uh, it is, uh, we are trying to minimize the virus uh, infection and we're trying to develop, you know, a lot of intervention uh, strategies to combat this virus. But in the meantime, our goal is to how we can minimize the spread of the infection. Now, for this purpose, I, I uh, discuss few things with you. As, you, as I have already said, that the mode of infection is human to human. And the source of infection is symptomatic persons 
and also the asymptomatic and pre symptomatic individuals okay now if uh, as you as you see that these virus uh, uh, when it uh, the infected person can release this virus into the environment in many different ways okay if a, a person infected person sneezes it uh, releases lots of lots of over 200 million virus into the environment and at a very high speed over 200 miles per hour compared to if an infected individual cops you know that also releases a, a 200 million virus but at a uh, lower lower speed similarly the breathing uh, of an uh, uh, by an infected individuals also releases some virus about 20 virus per, uh, per breath but if that person is speaking then the number of virus particle increases also it has been found that these uh, persons can get infected by using the toilets uh, which has been used by the infected person by various uh, mechanisms as, 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 as stated here. So what is important for your own, our own precaution, we need to understand few things. The, the first thing that you need to understand that what makes a successful infection, okay? The successful infection of an individual, it depends on two parameters, that how much virus it is, it is getting exposed and how long it is uh, getting exposed. It has been est estimated from other viral infections that this uh, uh, COVID-2 virus, about 1,000 virus uh, particle is required. Somebody has to be exposed to the 1,000 uh, virus to be, uh, get uh, successfully infected. Now, let us see how one can uh, get such, such 1,000 virus in, in, uh, in different scenario. If you are speaking to, uh, to an infected person and if or she, he or she sneezes on your face, you are uh, uh, destined to get the infected uh, 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 guarantee, guaranteed. If that person is speaking and it will speak with him for some certain time, it um, as low as five to ten minutes, there is a process or uh, uh, there is a chance that he will get infected. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, this scenario I am talking that when both the infected individual and uh, the uninfected individual, both are not wearing any mask, and they are not maintaining the social distance distancing okay so if you enter into a closed room where an infected individual sneezed or coughed few minutes earlier and you stay there for some time you are destined to get infected also but if that person is not not sneezed but he's just breathing in that room since the viral load release in, in inside that room so uh, it will take little more time about 50 minutes to get to get infected so you know these are the all scenarios where how we one can get infected so bottom line is that if you anyone spends greater than 10 minutes with a within a face-to-face -face situation there is a, a very high chance that the person will get will get infected if anyone who shares a face with an infected individual for a longer time and is in a closed space, there is a, a very high chance that the, this will be the person will uh, get infected. So, uh, so lastly, next slide, please. What is uh, the guidelines that are given? You know, uh, is that you avoid staying in a closed environment for a long time. Choose a supermarket. You have to do some grocery stores and things like that. But you choose a supermarket which is larger in size and you stay for a very minimum time in, uh, in, that, um, uh, in that market. Avoid definitely uh, the face-to-face -face interaction with, with a person who has potentially infected. Avoid the public toilets if possible. If you have to really have to go into a public toilet, you see you, uh, when somebody coming out, you, you stay for some time and then enter into the, into the toilet. One, two misconceptions that we often have that we have to be, we have to be, uh, you know, uh, recognized that it is very uh, risk is very low when you are out, are outside. So if you have to uh, take tea or you have to take coffee, please go outside and sit in the uh, sit outside and take uh, enjoy those uh, things. Not really try to take in the inside in a closed environment. Also, it is not that when an infected person just passed by you that you will get, get, get an infected because you have to remember it is the exposure and the time that is important to get infected. 
so all these things if you uh, if you can uh, keep in your mind and if you wash your hand with soap frequently if you stop touching your face if you uh, wear masks especially when you are in the closed environment you uh, and also if you maintain the social distance you know uh, there will be you can minimize uh, the chances of infection from uh, from another inf infected individuals so we have to keep this in mind as we proceed further uh, during uh, the, our life act uh, life activities so at the end as i say until and unless when there is a inter intervention uh, molecules like vaccines or drug molecules are, de are developed we have to really keep ourselves self by uh, by using these uh, taking these measures and also uh, and also see that we don't get infected and if i am infected i don't infect other people further because as i said that r0 is the most important that one is infected individual infects how many individuals we have to try to uh, reduce that number which is currently 1.55 to less than one so that we can we, uh, we can safely move into the uh, into the environment there is another aspect i did not talk about further which is very important that this how this virus is evolving okay uh, actually this virus uh, suffers uh, you know uh, quite quite a bit of mutations and these mutations may lead to higher severe virus or attenuated virus we don't know we have to see we have to do research more research and to see whether this virus is evolving or making more dangerous virus or less uh, dangerous virus that time a uh, time will tell there is another aspect uh, somebody says some some says that you know environment has something to do with the virus uh, stability but really we don't have much data in this respect as of now so please 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 maintain these guidelines so that you can stay uh, 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 uninfected and also you don't stay uh, infected infect others thank you very much with this i take the question and answer questions thank you very much sir that was really power packed information powerhouse. Thanks, thanks a lot. Incredibly useful information. And let me see if I received any question by clicking onto the chat box. Uh, I don't see any questions here. So I think I have many other questions, but maybe I'll just ask you one or two. So you you talked about that how really how incredibly complex this task of drug development and vaccine development and for this COVID-19, the SARS coronavirus 2, the vaccine development is taking place. Really, people are fast tracking the development. I mean, what do you think? What what is what is the reason? What is fast tracking it? Is is it is it the nature of the virus? And would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, actually, as you see, the major time once the uh, the agent against which the vaccine will be developed is determined, that takes a very long time uh, in other cases. But here, we really have fast tracked the life process of, of the virus, so we know which proteins are very important for the virus life cycle, and which proteins gives uh, you know immunity or uh, is responsible for the viral uh, uh, antibody development. Okay, so that part we, we have really fast track to understand the virus. Okay, virology. Okay, now the thing is that in order to develop the vaccine from based on this knowledge, we takes a long time because the uh, the idea is that we have to make sure that vaccine doesn't make any harm to the uh, uh, individual. You know, at least actually it is known that sometimes some vaccine, instead of doing good, can do bad. Okay, yeah. so that's why uh, it goes through a, a very rigorous clinical development, various uh, phases of clinical trial to make mm -hmm. sure the vaccine is efficacious. Okay, now what really uh, these um, these people are trying to minimize that time as much as as possible really squeezing that time uh, of a clinical trial the phase one phase two and phase three clinical trial which normally mm -hmm. takes a uh, major time uh, for the vaccine development they are trying to squeeze that time make it so organized away in a way and one is one of the most, most important thing for this particular vaccine development the whole world actually both the industry pharmaceutical industry and the government, the various research laboratory, they are working in a very coordinated fashion, you know, uh, uh, together yeah. so that 
all uh, any extra time can be uh, can be uh, uh, can be uh, utilized uh, uh, purposefully carefully so minimize that time so it's really a great challenge you know people have undertaken as i said if this is going to be successful then it is going to be a watershed moment in the in the um, biomedical history in the medical history yeah. we don't know whether because it's really we don't know at present absolutely yeah so this is this is the power of you know coordinated and concerted yeah. movement of everyone coming together to address this this yeah. dire need and this great yeah, dire. yeah it's it's yeah. great to great to really witness it to be honest yeah. and yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe i'll just ask you one more question so you talked about r0 in indian population which is 1.55 mm. and do you have any suggestion any thought about how people can actually bring down the r0 to less than one which is a phase every country wants to attain yeah actually so, you know, all every country, everybody wants to attend that phase. Yeah. Okay, and obviously, the best way to attend that uh, that state is uh, having some interventions like drugs and you know, kill the virus or uh, vaccines. You know, that doesn't allow to infect others. Uh, unless and until that is there, it is only way that one can, we can do is uh, what we are doing right now mm -hmm. is uh, is is uh, trying to minimize the infection as 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 as, as, as possible. Mm -hmm. There is another parameter here uh, that is, is that is actually we are trying through this lockdown and all this process. There is another parameter here. So we did, I did not talk about. It is called the series intervals. That means today there is one infected patients come to my clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long it takes the next in infected individuals come to my uh, to my clinic? Okay? okay, as that time is increased, we are we know that we are reducing the infections. Okay, right. infectivity. Okay, so uh, all these uh, the, all these parameters in order to achieve these parameters, you know that you, you maximize the time of next infections as well as you you, you minimize the uh, uh, individual infects less than one individual uh, all that the measures is we are to, uh, we are trying to do is to uh, all this lockdown social distancing on all these things that we are doing but as you know uh, this also has some other effect on the society uh, at large like you know economic effect and social effect on all these things and i'm right. sure that uh, that psychological effects are also we are going to discuss in our this webinar series so all these matters are there so for a for a administration we uh, they, uh, they have to really take into consideration of all these parameters all these things to decide that how they will uh, how they will how they will progress okay uh, so uh, let us see but what as an individual as a, as a citizen you know uh, I, I, I i try to uh, that message that i'm trying to give them whatever or not you go out or you, you stay inside it is that you, if you maintain those things you know uh, that you don't stay you always wear mask you don't stay in a closed environment for a long time okay those things if you maintain okay then there is a we can increase that time in time a series interval time Okay, and as a result, I think uh, these <coughs> infectivity uh, 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 ratios will also uh, decrease. That's uh, that's the hope. And there is another uh, another alternative that has been already said, which is called herd immunity. So you go out and get infected, and then you know some of them will have that have that will die, and most of them people will not die. So we'll uh, develop a herd immunity in the in the population. But it's really uh, difficult to implement. And we are not very sure that how long it takes to develop that herd immunity. And there are several uh, knowledge gap is there. So uh, uh, the you know you know, UK and other places they tried to do, but they could not do it. Uh, do it in, uh, uh, you know that that technique. So it's really uh, questionable at present. But there we are, people are arguing also on that thing. Yeah, that was that was a lot of discussion in UK and initially UK in UK people thought is that this is the best way to really deal with this virus and the pandemic to coming back in maybe this winter, next time to build the herd immunity and people starting to question what really what it takes to develop the herd immunity, what percentage of population needs to be infected. And it's if I remember correctly, up. it's around half. It's a fifty yes, percent. Yes, yes, so yes, that's yes. a crazy thing. In yeah, this yeah. Pandemic, that's very difficult. That's very so difficult. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we have another question. Uh, we have a question raised by uh, Shom Shubhranath. Uh, the question is: If I find that I'm exposed with all potential risks 
is there any preventive measure I can take even before any symptom? Uh, I can't hear you. Can you uh, make uh, louder your microphone? So, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can hear you now. Yes. So, so there is a question from Shom Shubranath. Uh, mm. I'm repeating the question. Uh, it says, mm. that if I find that I have been exposed with all mm. potential risks, is mm. there any preventive measure I can take even before any symptom arises? Thanks for your question, and uh, Dr. Raju will answer it now. Yeah, I think you know if if you are exposed to an infected individual, you know, uh, uh, I think there is no other alternative than you quarantine yourself. Okay, uh, you make sure that you do not uh, you do not uh, come in contact with other individuals. Okay, now uh, if you uh, through that exposure, whether or not you, whether or not you got infected. Okay, that you have to wait for, as I, as I showed you, about seven to ten days, and then see whether symptoms are coming. Uh, uh, it is better than if you can, uh, if you, within five days or so, if you can test yourself for the uh, for the uh, for the virus. But at present, the regulatory authority is not really uh, uh, testing everybody. We are trying to test uh, uh, test everybody, but uh, at present we are not there. Uh, so you know, if the symptoms comes, then you, uh, you uh, uh, automatically will get tested. And if you find positive, you have to stay quarantined if, uh, 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 further. And if you develop more symptoms, then you have to get admitted and go to the hospital. And the fortunate thing is that majority people of the uh, people doesn't go in that way. Majority of the people, almost 80 to 90 percent people, actually resolve this uh, infection and get recovered. Okay, uh, only a small percentage of the people, which are mostly the unfortunate, the old uh, people and people with which uh, who has some uh, underlying uh, 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 diseases like heart disease or diabetes or you know cancer and all these things, they uh, are more tend to develop the severe forms. But most of the cases, it doesn't develop any severe form. It gets automatically resolved. Maybe with mild, mild symptoms maybe with little a little more symptoms and actually about 40 percent 40 to 50 percent of these uh, infected individuals don't even know that they are infected they just remain asymptomatic and that's the one reason that is very we need or the reason everybody is telling that we need to uh, need to increase the number of individual uh, testing you know because we have to know who are the asymptomatic carrier because those asymptomatic carrier can potentially infect a vulnerable, susceptible individuals. Okay, so uh, you know, but those asymptomatic individuals never will uh, have any uh, disease at all. So uh, all you, if you find that you are uh, see that you are you are exposed, you quarantine yourself, wait for some times, and see uh, symptoms coming uh, comes up or not. And uh, if symptoms comes out, you get tested, and accordingly uh, the thing will take uh, the course will take place. Thank you very much, sir. I think we are pretty much close to the time. And I would like to give this session over to Devashish to close it. Thank you. So thank you, Atri. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Rai for this uh, wonderful session. It was so much, uh, so much of insights. Uh, I'm sure each one of us who has uh, spent this beautiful one hour, our knowledge is much more increased. It's on based, based on scientific facts. And we hear a lot of hearsays here, uh, so we have a lot of news and so much of contradiction. But today, I think we got the best opportunity to listen and hear and understand from you how this uh, disease is, is progressing. And, and we also see a ray of hope from, uh, from the vaccines that you talked about today. So I thank everyone here. I thank all members of OnCompanion who have worked hard to make this uh, uh, webinar a success. So as a founder member of this organization, um, I, I'm very much grateful uh, for it to you and also to all the participants who have come here today with your, with your questions and enrich this seminar. I, I really thank you for that. Uh, I would also like to um, close off the session by mentioning that uh, we are coming up with the next uh, out of the series of webinars. The next one will be addressing the psychological aspect of, uh, of COVID-19 and how uh, we can uh, address those kind of stress. So we will have uh, one of our psychological uh, psychologists and experts uh, talking about uh, the psychological impact. 
we will soon announce the date so keep an eye on on our web page on our on our facebook uh, pages so uh, i would look forward uh, to to listen, uh, to get back all of your attention uh, sometimes in a month or so so uh, i look forward to our next meeting by saying so i would again like to thank everyone here who have been part of this seminar and of course i wish you all um, a safe and a healthy uh, a healthy stay um, stay stay safe stay uh, healthy and maintain the social distance as sir has been telling uh, again and again with this i'll i'll close the session i'll i'll say good evening good night to every one of you who some places in india where it's quite late so uh, wish you a good night and good evening thank you so much thank you thank very you. much everyone thank bye thank you bye 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 bye